WATE 6 on your side legal analyst Greg Isaacs is here as once again we look into the law surrounding the presidential election. Greg, thank you for being here. Lori, it's good to be here. Voting for president is a complicated matter. At least we've learned that this time around. The never-ending election, despite <laughs> the fact that the majority of the free world uh, chooses the winner in an election by popular vote, uh, the U.S. has one of the most complicated uh, election systems uh, in the world. Yeah, the Electoral College uh, voted Monday for President-elect Joe Biden. Is that it? Well, it, let's talk about a little bit how we got there. Okay. November 4th, that, that really doesn't mean that's election day. 22 states, uh, District of Columbia, uh, they have a grace period that could be two, three, four days or longer. Then the vote has to be certified by a city, county, board of canvassers. Then there has to be a certificate of ascertainment signed by the governor. If it's close, within a half a point or a point, mm -hmm. you get a recount automatically. So then what happens? Uh, they are electors. We don't vote for the president. We vote for a slate of electors. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court ruled this summer electors cannot be faithless. They have to vote for uh, the majority of the votes cast in the state where they can be removed or fined. So and now, in that regard, our vote counts. In that regard, well, all, it, it's starting to get closer to counting. <laughs> so then the governor signs a certificate of ascertainment. Mm -hmm. Then on December 8th, we have Safe Harbor Day, which means uh, if there's any disputes among electors, you have to resolve them. Then December 14th is really Election Day. The electors meet at the state house and they cast votes. But Lori, is it over? No, it's never over. January 6th, a joint session of Congress, they meet to vote or accept the Electoral College votes. Mm -hmm. This is all normally perfunctory. Right. But what happens, both, both the Senate and Congress meet in a joint session. You know what's going to happen. But if there is an objection, just one objection has to be in writing, clearly state the basis for the objection, then they adjourn. Then they have to decide on the objection by a simple majority and then go from there. If they can't do it, it goes back to the electors. So, Lori, even as we sit here today, uh, we still really, I mean, we know, but we don't know. It's not signed and sealed. It's all the not way. signed and sealed all the way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I said it was complicated. And you were right. <laughs> we all know that's for sure. Really quickly, there was talk Monday about alternate electors or competing electors. What about that? You can't do it. The only way you could do it under the 12th Amendment is, is if there was not a majority of electors for one candidate. Okay. That's not it. And again, let's look at what happened in this election. Uh, the, President Biden won the popular vote. Now, in 2016, uh, President Trump won the Electoral College, did not win the popular vote, right. neither did George W. Bush. But uh, hopefully on January 6th, your vote has counted. All right. We'll leave it at that. Greg Isaacs, thank you. Thank you. All right, if you have a question for Greg, just send an email to askisaacs at wate.com. And then be sure to tune in to WATE 6 on your side news at 530 every Wednesday to see if he answers any of your legal questions.